Okay, so as we've built up digital color underneath our black line art, we have been pretty methodical with it. And I've set it up like a sandwich where I have white bread on the bottom, black bread on the top, right? And if we're building the sandwich, we put the white bread down. And the first thing we put on is our flat color. Then I did shadow variations to that color. So that's duotone, hard edged. You can see everything's cut out really cleanly. It's a pretty nice look, which I kind of like. But then you can also add on duotone soft edged. So if I just did duotone soft edge and turned off the hard edge, you can see this. All of the variations. It's only at it's at a lower opacity. It has dissolve turned on. And it softens some areas more than others. Like this part of the skull, it doesn't soften at all. And if we add them together, this is what I liked. So that's all the toppings on our sandwich thus far. Then we added, I'll stay zoomed in, a full spectrum layer in our sandwich, which on its own looks like this. It's just this soft pin light overlay of a rainbow, like from purple to yellow and orange. You can see the purple there. You can see the orange there. If we add it on, it's like mustard on our sandwich. Kind of augments the taste of everything underneath, the cheese, the tomatoes. And now we have those toppings, a flat color layer, a duotone hard edge layer, a duotone soft edge layer, and a full spectrum layer. And now we can put the black bread on top and we've got a full colored sandwich. But black bread is a little harsh for some people. Sometimes they like a nice wheat bread, a brown bread. So the next thing that we're gonna learn is how to change our um, line art color. And it's very simple to do. We're just going to double click on the line art and pick a color overlay option. So here I've just replaced all of my black line art with red. It's not exactly what I had in mind. So let's change that color and let's pick, which is pretty, pretty common in digital coloring, like a dark reddish brown. like a deep rust color, we can do that. Say okay. And if you wanna see how that's different than black, you can just turn off the effect and turn the effect back on. And so here, the color of our bread is slightly changed, right? From black to a, to a brown. We can also add things like a slight outer glow to our line art. So that's pretty strong. See it without it, with it. And we can pick the color of it. And that color actually works pretty well. I might gray it out a little bit. And then we can set it to be a little bit bigger. A little bit noisier, so it has some texture and variation. There we go, a little bit more like tattoo art. This is asking a lot of the browser-based program. So I saved beforehand, because remember, we're still working at nine by 12 inches at 300 pixels per inch. And you can see how this affects everything underneath that black bread layer. Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> come on. And this is a really good way, if you're coloring kind of takes away from your line art. 
Sometimes you just have to type stuff in. This is a good way to kind of reassert your line art. And then, of course, I can play with the opacity of it and make it so it's not quite so strong. Come on. There we go. So let's try that. There we go. And I, I can always, well, oh, it didn't do it. It should remember all my settings. Yep, more or less. OK, so let's see what this looks like and what it looks like without it. See, that helps where my shadows got really dark, especially that outer glow. <laughs> Come on. Helps all of that to show up again. Now, you can do fancier things with your color holds rather than just painting your, your line art brown. Like if I wanted this to be the light side, this to be the dark side, I could also add a gradient overlay. And these are all so fun to show, but the gradient overlay will only show up if you dim your color overlay, unless you move it on top. Now I don't want a rainbow for my line art, but this is one where maybe I do want a light to dark gradient like this. But I'll only see it once I take the opacity down or if I turn off my color overlay, that rust color. So you can see the gradient overlays there, but I'm only going to see it if I take... Where'd it go? <laughs> I keep it clicking on my... Um, history, I think, as I'm trying to affect the layer style. Okay, there it is. So now if I turn off my color overlay, you have to be patient. There it is. You can see that it's kind of a bluish now, and that bluish is actually a gradient running through. So if I want to blend those together, yeah, I like that blue gradient. See how I like the blue better than the red. But I can kind of blend them together a little just by playing with the opacity. So just like we played with coloring our logos using layer styles, this is these are called um, on top of your line art, they're called color holds. So I'm just going to take, turn it to dissolve, and take its opacity down of the, the red color overlay. Take it down quite a bit. Yeah. Now if we zoom in, I think I did it, and then I undid it by clicking on the history. So let me Try it again and maybe move it so I'm not on top of my history. Because it doesn't look like it's only 50%. OK, yeah, let's move it. And sure enough, it's at 100%. So I want it to be dissolve mode. So you'll see the red. I want it to be about less than 50% even. So my computer's working hard, so there's a bit of a lag. So now you can see it. Oh, that's nice. The dappling between the blues and the rusty reds. 
So that to me for this illustration is more interesting than solid black. So that's the color hold I'll use for the line art. And now I have a more complicated bread, right? So that's one type of color hold, layer styles on your black bread layer. The other type is just to do a layer on top of your black bread layer. So I'll call this color holds. And this is for special effects that go on top. For instance, what if I want to change the color of the knife? Well, I can select the knife and I can select, I can duplicate that selection from the black bread layer. So it's just the line art of the knife. It has all these effects on it, right? And then I can simply change those effects. So let's make the color overlay 100% and let's make it a bluish gray. Because a metal with a dark outline doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it could look like that. Could look like maybe a little bit more pewtery. We'll just do that for now. And then same thing for the handle of the knife. I can go to my black bread layer. I can select just the handle. So it's just the line art. Then I can play with its color overlay. Whoop. I have to duplicate it first. I'm going to go ahead and lock, <laughs> lock my black bread layer. Select, lock, Command J, duplicate. Now I can change the color of that handle. to Kind of a darker brown, something that works with gold. Something like that. I can even let the gradation show through a little. So now just with that little color hold on the blade and on the handle, those have a little bit more of a reflective property. Might be nice to do that on the flower as well. You know, different parts, I'll, I'll keep playing with it probably on the heart. But like anything, you can overdo it. And this is adding a lot of memory needs to it. It's kind of nice. And then I'll probably do the flower, but I won't waste the time doing it now. Now, what if I wanted a little glint, a little star? Well, what if I do this? I go to my black red layer. I select the empty space in the eye star here, right? And I make it, I move that onto a brand new layer. And then I fill it with, let's just say, custom color. And I pick that color and I'm going to make it kind of a really light blue. 
100%. All right. Now I can move that. This is on its own layer. 